My Ideal by Lawrence Maynard Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I asked not radiant beauty for her face, nor perfect contour for her cherished form, if but with love sincere her heart be warm each line will seem to me of matchless grace nor care i thought she lacked a cultured mind in lore of bygone sages deeply learned full many a soul life's truth hath well discerned by pureness made an eye among the blind let her be simple sweet and true in heart neither too good to sense the joys of earth nor yet too sordid heaven to understand with calm reliance in her soul's command able by her example to impart her virtues to the children of her birth end of poem this recording is in the public domain Eve's Daughters by Lawrence Maynard Read for LibriVox.org by Rebecca She wanders through the city's crowded streets. With eager eyes she scans the passing throng, alert to red desire in those she meets. Her lips half conscious of a careless song, and shameless pride seems all her mind to hold. But as she passes, yon poor girl, whose face speaks purity, draws back from one so bold and looks with scorn on her unholy grace. She sees the glance. The careless song has ceased. Her fallen eyes in shame their drooped lids hide, and like to life before her seems to rise her mother's face and form from death released, herself a pure child standing by her side, and quick the bitter tears bedim her eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The City of the Dead by Lawrence Maynard Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The green field widens out from where I lie. The grass waves idly in the summer breeze. The squirrel scampers through the bending trees. And to and from their nests the robins fly. From every side the perfume of bright flowers Mingles its sweetness with the balmy air, While many a butterfly of colors rare Darts in and out the blossom-laden bowers. Yet, save the stir of leaves, there comes no sounds, Except the twittering of birds, which seems A half-heard echo in a land of dreams, a mystic hush the hollowed place surrounds where peaceful sleep each in his narrow bed the dwellers of the city of the dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain helen of troy by lawrence maynard read for LibriVox.org by eva davis helen of troy was she whose dazzling beauty long ago filled a young world with strife and sorrows keen of stature queenly with commanding mien and haughty features nay i think not so but rather she was soft and sweet and small with baby features and bewitching smiles so innocent that seems to know no guile yet hides a heart unprincipled in all and with clear eyes, false, false in everything, could look her lover in the face and ask, Canst thou then doubt me? And her feelings mask and seem to speak with truth's sincerest ring. For such the women are since time began, that have beguiled the strongest hearts of man. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Boy Columbus by Lawrence Maynard. Read for LibriVox.org 
by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c a pensive youth that haunts the ocean shore attentive listening to old seamen's tales or watching long the fleet of tossing sails far out beyond the sea-beat coast's loud roar or bent with eager eyes some volume o'er his boyish cheek now flushes and now pales reading of barks storm-tossed before great gales in many a wondrous story of sea-lore perchance the child to those old sailors seemed only an idle listener although and then of great discoveries he dreamed which day by day more real to him did grow until so clear the path became he deemed he heard the voice of god commanding go end of poem this recording is in the public domain a portrait by lawrence maynard read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c a slender form of grace that day by day i watch and see upon my attentive eyes new and maturer beauties dawn which say that womanhood is born and girlhood dies sweet pensive eyes that speak a wealth of love as yet all unbestowed stored up within such eyes of pureness as a guileless dove may have as yet unconscious of all sin the moist red lips so ripe for kisses sweet still smile in innocence the soft brown hair beclouds her forehead while dark tresses meet loose braided falling o'er her shoulders fair god keep her thus and in her woman's face may girlhood's purity still hold its place end of poem this recording is in the public domain delilah by laurens maynard read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c my soul oft times would rise to purer air my wayward feet reseek the upward path not that i fear the terrors of god's wrath but in desire that i his peace might share and then i feel thy hand upon my own restraining and before my prayerful eyes thy face in dreamy sweetness seems to rise and heaven's pearly gates are turned to stone my aspirations vanish and again my love for thee supreme holds full control of all my heart's desires and my soul claims only thee in blind unreasoning pain and with thy lips forever mine to kiss i feel that hell itself would be but bliss end of poem this recording is in the public domain loki und sign by laurens maynard read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c suggested by carl gerhardt's painting bound to a rock gigantic which the tides in angry surges lash but break in foam impotent on its everlasting sides fierce loki lies this his eternal home and unavailing as the raging waves struggles to burst his bonds above his head the poison dropping serpent ceaseless raves but sign by a tender wife love led stands ever ready with her cup to seize the scalding venom thus the gods decrees are overruled and to my mind the thought thence comes that we 
when all our life is fraught with trials sore of baneful destiny relief from all our pains in love can see end of poem this recording is in the public domain to gertrude an acrostic by laurens maynard read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c graceful and light must verses be to tell each charm of thine that captive holds my heart rarer the gift that could to words impart thy fairness in my sight who loving well read beauty in each feature and dispel under thy smile all sadness how could art describe thee fitly when from thee apart each hour in whatsoever place i dwell with tardy minutes lingers wearily could thy dear face for ever greet mine eyes all loneliness would vanish these dull skies in summer splendors ever clothed would be nor could i ever fail in love for thee entire in thy hand my future lies end of poem this recording is in the public domain the magi's gifts by laurens maynard read for librivox dot org by larry wilson nay lord not thus not thus it is not meet to bring rich offerings to thy sacred shrine who having all things mundane and divine created carest not for incense sweet these arches towering splendid to the skies these gilded altars and these vestments rich these costly statues carven in each niche are but the world's display in holy guise nay when we offer thee earth's richest store we but present thee that thou hadst before but when our hearts we to thy service lend we offer thee a gift that ne'er shall end and thou hast said a broken contrite heart in sacrifice is mine accepted part in the poem this recording is in the public domain An inscription by Lawrence Maynard, read for LibriVox.org by Susanna Mason. In a volume of Herrick's Hesperides, for J. P. P. To her whose sweet voice song, like a pure brook, in smooth and sparkling verse flows light and free, take all the pleasure that thou gavest me. When first I read thy words, O little book, each mood and inner feeling with her share. If she be glad, rehearse thy liveliest strain. If gay, thy witty lines repeat again if pensive tell her all thy wisdom rare and be thy mission thus to give her mind with thy bright verse enjoyment unconfined though if thou canst perform one other task to bring me joy this be the boon i ask let whatsoever on thy page she see direct her thoughts a moment unto me end of poem this recording is in the public domain Budding Morrow by Laurens Maynard, read for LibriVox.org by Susanna Mason. There is a budding morrow in midnight, Keats. Although at midnight's chime all lights from earth be fled, and through night's shadows to the eyes of us, the weary watchers of the skies, no sign appears of a glad morrow's birth. Yet at that moment the receding sun starts on his course, returning to our sight. Though it be long, or any rays of light announce his progress on the path begun therefore o soul in trial's darkest hour have faith for now thy deepest sorrow past the sun of joy his steps retracing fast journeys to meet thee with increasing power and soon his light shall to thine eyes appear dispelling gloom and shaming all thy fear end of poem this recording is in the public domain To L. A. C. by Laurens Maynard, read for LibriVox.org by Susanna Mason. Written after seeing her illustration for the Dance of Death. 
to thee who hast so fully grasped the thought which my imperfect verse essayed to speak my thanks are due the inspirations caught by thine artistic pencil show how weak my own conceptions were and are become the matchless gem which mounted on in dross attracts our wondering gaze and makes us dumb with admiration i shall feel no loss if thy work draw the greater share of praise contented i if but a single glance rest on my unskilled verse and that glance be one having favour from my weird death stance ungrateful am i not i would be he who honour the one deserving pays end of poem this recording is in the public domain madonna mia by lawrence maynard read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson she has a face in which you might not see more fairness than is common to her sex although each feature her pure soul reflects in lines of sweet perfection unto me she has a form which to your searching eyes might show no more than ordinary grace and yet to me e'en as her peerless face discloses beauty such as never dies she has a voice which you indeed might hear without emotion yet the truth confessed an ecstasy of pleasure fills my breast if but its slightest whisper strikes mine ear face form and voice my heart and chain through life the reason do you ask she is my wife in the poem this recording is in the public domain in sunset by lawrence maynard Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The setting sun has sunk into the west. On fleecy clouds the tints of dying light Grow ever fainter, fading from my sight. And sleepy chirping birds have sought their nest. The world in sombre gray of twilight dressed seems strangely silent as the approaching night follows with darkness on the daylight's flight and weary nature sinks into her rest i turn to thee dear one beside me here in loneliness but in thy features see love's glorious light all unbedimmed still shine flooding my heart with radiance divine and quick i feel that i should know no fear since that sweet sun shall never set to me end of poem this recording is in the public domain ghosts by lawrence maynard read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c and why should i his simple faith deride who holds the soul released from bonds of earth may quit the shadowy realms of its new birth what while it stands some earthly mate beside seen but of him and by none other eye since souls have as ye say eternal life can aught be strange amid this endless strife where time still hurries to eternity not while to me more wondrous shades appear where ne'er had mortal form yet which i see in outline clear before me while i hear we are the deeds of love undone by thee thy wasted hours of rejected light and while thou livest we may not quit thy sight end of poem this recording is in the public domain after sleep waking by lawrence maynard read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the day is gone the sun has sunk from sight and with the day is gone the loud 
turmoil, Voices of joy and sorrow, sounds of toil, All gone and silence follows with the night. Now all the weary that in this day's fight Strove bravely onward o'er the stubborn soil, And halted not through many a bitter foil, Sleep peacefully awaiting morning light. As now in grateful trust of coming dawn, We close our eyes and sink into sweet rest. And thus, when at the close of life's long day, our weary hearts the call to sleep obey in steadfast hope enfolded to death's breast we wait the advent of eternal morn end of poem this recording is in the public domain sunrise land by lawrence maynard read for LibriVox.org by linda Marie nielsen vancouver b c by the warm breath of summer gently fanned away from home and thoughts of care we steal within the wide deck ship whose eager keel spurning our shores steers forth for sunrise land now vast and multitudinous on each hand the restless surging ocean billows reel and o'er their foam-capped crests to us reveal the outlines of a panorama grand passamaquoddy's shores and islands green the rugged sea-girt cliffs of grand manan forever washed by fundy's mighty tides acadian fields and bloomidon's steep sides and breton's cape where on the sun to man new rising in the western world is seen end of poem this recording is in the public domain first meeting by lawrence maynard read for LibriVox .org by larry wilson as one red rose within a garden fair blossoms sometimes and to perfection blown amid the wealth of flowers stands alone for none can with its matchless hues compare and coming on the beauty unaware we watch it enviously where it has grown yet hesitate to pluck and make our own so rich a bud of loveliness so rare e'en so amid a throng of maiden sweet whose fairness seems when matched beside thy grace as light of stars before the queenly moon thou stoodst when first i gazed upon thy face and though i dared not hope so great a boon with eager longing quick my pulses beat end of poem this recording is in the public domain Plighted Troth by Lawrence Maynard, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Still in my memory lives that long past day, radiant with all the beauties of new spring, when with a burst of rapture seemed to sing each feathered chorister, and all the way through woodland paths and dainty flowers of May bloomed at our feet, and in my heart did ring responsive harmony each living thing seemed clothed with heavenly light i heard thee say where'er thy journey tend i will be thine though dark the way though clouds o'ercast the sky sunshine must follow storm with thee near by lead but thou on thy pathway shall be mine and at the word i sense new joys divine and read my heaven in thy lovelit eye End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Honeymoon by Lawrence Maynard. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. At length the long expected day is past. What seemed a dream of happiness too rare for man this side of heaven's gates to share is realized by me. At last, 
at last thou art all mine own no clouds of doubt o'ercast our wedded life serene the peaceful air breathes round us and thy loving smile so fair sheds sunlight in my heart to thine bound fast gone are the maddening raptures which i knew when love and trust with fear and doubt made strife instead a holy calm fills all my life for perfect knowledge hath cast out all fear and while thine eyes i see thy voice i hear what can i do but ever know thee true end of poem this recording is in the public domain nuptial sleep by lawrence maynard read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson as in the dusky night i ope mine eyes and gather back my thoughts from idle dreams thy sleeping face beside me pillowed seems such fantasy as in my dreams did rise and i a moment wondering gaze and fear thy form will fade i touch the silken hair which like an aureole frames thy features fair and wonder still thou dost not disappear but as i fold thee to my breast and see the wealth of love within thy wakened eyes as waters deep reflect the boundless skies and crush thy lips in kisses sweet to me i know my bliss is real that dreams are o'er and i am thine thou mine for evermore in the poem this recording is in the public domain maternity by lawrence maynard read for librivox dot org by larry wilson how can i tell with what grave fears possessed i watch thee slowly near that fateful day on which i knew not whether i should say of all men i most cursed or most blessed a thousand dread misgivings filled my breast and oft from aching heart depths did i pray that thou mine all might not be taken away and still my anxious heart could find no rest until that hour when first within thine arms close to thy breast i saw my baby boy then were the shadows of my mind's alarms lost in a flood of overwhelming joy as in thine eyes i saw o oh, light divine the new love make the old love brighter shine End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Faithful Forever by Lawrence Maynard. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Can it be true that five and thirty years have passed us, dearest, since our wedding day? If years bring changes with them, as some say, their changes were to us but empty fears and to my heart no difference appears although we see our grandchildren today where once we watched our children's happy play still the same love unchanged our old age cheers when on thy face i gaze it is with eyes that look far deeper than the outward form and seeing all the beauty of thy soul will not admit one flaw within the whole of thy dear being since thy heart is warm with all that holy love which never dies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. 